some acids are acids and some molecules aren't. You know, even talk about why some acids are strong and some, why some are weak. So essentially, what makes an acid an acid? <coughs> All right, so I'm going to draw two very similar molecules, okay? So based, uh, both are two carbons, okay? So the first one is ethanol. I'll try to draw it well. All right, so this is ethanol. And any molecule that starts out with F, E, T, H, has two carbons. Okay, that's why I'm going So just C2H6 is ethane. Add an OH on it, that's an alcohol, so we call it ethanol. If you take uh, that two carbon molecule and add a carboxylic acid group to it, So instead of just the OH, it's got the carbonyl and the OH, so that's the carboxylic acid group, just like in the amino acid. All right. We would call this ethanoic acid. So still uh, ethane or eth, but this one actually has a common name. So ethanoic acid is its IUPAC name, its systematic name, its International Union of Pure Applied Chemists. Not the name drop or anything. Um, that's how they uh, name it. But most people would call this acetic acid. So this is in your vinegar, in your pickle juice, in your vinaigrette. Balsamic vinaigrette. Okay. All right. So one of these molecules is an acid, one of these is not. Which one do you think is the acid? Acetic acid? Nailed it. Got it. Yeah, so acetic acid is the acid. You guys are on the ball today. All right, yes, it is. Okay, let's figure out why it's an acid. Okay, ethanol is not an acid. All right, so what do we mean by that? It's not going to donate any of those H plus ions. All of those hydrogens, you place ethanol water, they're all going to stay. Ethanoic acid or acetic acid will donate a proton. It's only going to donate one, and it happens to be this one. That is the uh, proton that could be donated and can be donated. It's a weak acid, so it will be donated some percentage of the time. So what we call that is the acidic proton. None of the other H hydrogen atoms would be donated uh, in acetic acid. All of those would stay. Okay? So they're not going to be donated. <coughs> okay, so let's try to figure out, and it turns out we know the chemistry. We know enough chemistry to figure out why uh, that would be um, donated. We just got to think about some of the logic of what happens uh, when you would donate. Okay? So if we're going to donate this protons, H plus ion, somewhere else. What has to happen to this bond? It breaks, yeah, it breaks. Okay, that's what effectively you're doing when you donate that proton. That covalent bond is breaking. H plus ion goes somewhere else, goes find a better home, wherever it's going. Uh, those two electrons in that bond uh, stay and then you would make um, C, doo -doo -doo -doo. no, you make the acetate polyatomic ion, and then the H plus ion. Okay, so yep, that uh, bond has to break for it to be donated. So what do you think that says about that covalent bond? Do you think that's a strong bond or a weak bond? Weak, yep, that's gonna be a weak bond. 
Any bond that doesn't break in aqueous solution is going to be much stronger. Okay? And so it's going to hold on. Okay? They're going to make it. Those two crazy kids, they're going to make it. Okay? <coughs> but that bond is weak. So now we got to think about why would that bond be weaker than any other hydrogen bond between these? Okay? What's that? Just thinking out loud? Okay. Uh, so the uh, hydrogen is bonded to oxygen. All right. What do we know about oxygen? What do we know about oxygen? It forms O2. That's good. What else? Has six valence electrons? What else? It, forms, it can form weak bonds with some things and strong bonds with some things. Polar. And so why, why does it make polar uh, bonds and polar, polar compounds? What's the word? No, it's one of the Nops, it's one of the Nops, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what's that what's that property that leads to a polar bond? You get with an E. Electronegative. It's very electronegative. Remember, oxygen was one of the very electronegative atoms. Okay, so what's that mean? It means those electrons are attracted to it much more strongly than they are the hydrogen, right? And so the electrons like high oxygen more than hydrogen. And so if those electrons are hanging out by oxygen, oxygen most of the time, that's really what that bond is, the electrons, they're shared attraction, they're actually the overlapping orbitals. And so that's what weakens that bond, okay? Now they're both uh, bonded to an oxygen, so they're both going to be polar. The other big difference is that this hydrogen is very close to another oxygen that's just as electronegative, and so there's a bigger pool for those electrons away from that hydrogen. The two oxygens in tandem cause a big difference in electronegativity, pull those electrons towards it, effectively making this a pretty weak bond. Okay. Just one oxygen won't do it. So that's why ethanol and any alcohol is not an acid. Okay? If it was an acid, we'd call it an acid. Okay? But nope, it's an alcohol. And so that's not weak enough. Okay, it's a polar bond, it gives it all kinds of physical properties, but the two oxygens cause that bond to be very weak. So what we say is this, the electronegativity, the high electronegativity of this group pulls the electrons from the bond making it weak. Now, just in this, as an aside, and I'll talk about, I'll, I'll try to point this out more often. I usually don't do as good a job. And there's also some uh, logic for the fact that the polyatomic ion that it creates, this acetate ion is very stable once it gets those electrons. If it wasn't stable, it would want that hydrogen ion back. So the acetate ion is also very stable, making that possible to be donated. Okay. Yeah, this is any acid. But that's what we are going to talk about next. That was a good segue. Thank you. Uh, so what's the difference between a weak acid and a strong acid? Well, it's just a question of how weak is that bond. If that bond is really weak, it's going to break all the time, 100% strong acid. If that bond is eh, kind of weak, it will break some of the time, 10% of the time maybe, and that will be a weak acid. And so that's the distinction between weak acids versus strong acids. Man, I'm getting good at that. See that swipe? Ooh, right, in t right as I was saying it, and it's like I meant to do it. I still accidentally change the slide way more often than I mean to change the slide, so eh, I'm getting there. Okay. So HCl is a strong acid.
And so it ionizes 100%. We knew that. And so that means it is a very weak bond. And so we could even write, change up the color. That's a lot of green. So when we write it, you can do it either way. Let's just do it uh, Arrhenius, just to save some time. 100% one arrow, boom. <coughs> HF, our favorite weak acid, is a weak acid because its bond is eh, only kind of weak. So that means it's a, a kind of weak bond. And then, of course, that would set up equilibrium then, right? Because that bond, because it's not so weak endeavor and wants to form back again, it will reform and make more HF molecules. All right, so when ACL is in solution, it ionizes or donates 100% of the proton. And that bond is so weak the H plus and chloride are never coming back together. They're never reforming that bond because it's so weak. And that's why it's irreversible. It goes only one way, 100%. Whereas the HF bond is kind of strong. Okay, it's strong enough that when every once in a while, hydrogen fluoride will get back together, form a bond, make HF. And then, hey, it's not that strong of a bond, so every once in a while that bond breaks again. And it ionizes. And then of course it goes, it sets up equilibrium when that rate of ionizing and reforming equal each other. What would be a very strong bond that So very strong bonds that don't break would be any molecule that's not an acid. Of course, let me put moves into it. Like carbon hydrogen. Carbon hydrogen is a really strong bond. That's never coming off. Okay? Um, Really strong bond. And that's actually why, you know, hydrocarbons, fossil fuels, are so uh, good as a fuel source because they got, they're really strong. That means they've got really good potential energy in there. Um, so that's, you know, the hydrocarbons, really strong bonds. And even just one oxygen isn't going to cut it, okay? It has to be two oxygens where we're going to um, create a uh, uh, weak enough bond that it donates. So on just an alcohol, an OH bond, that's a... Uh, Pretty strong. So sugars, sugars have lots of OH bonds, like sucrose, glucose, they have OH bonds, but they don't ionize, so they're not acids. Alcohols, carbohydrates. Yeah. All right. <coughs> so why were that why what caused that bond to be weak again? So the two oxygens here, and so we said the high electronegativity. Okay, and then when I so coolly went to the next slide, that's another reason. They're not gonna, the future video watchers are not going to see all the cool slide transitioning I'm doing up here. Yeah. But then when we talk about HCl and HF, we said HCl is really weak bond. HF has a somewhat stronger bond. What's kind of not... Yeah, so the electronegativity, what's more electronegative? Chlorine or chlorine? Fluorine. Fluorine is more electronegative. Okay? It is the most electronegative atom in the universe. You knew I was going to say that. Somewhat predictable. Okay? All right. 
Uh, so yeah, fluorine is more electronegative, but it's going to make weak acid. So obviously, it's not just about electronegativity. Right? So electronegativity is a big, uh, you know, decider if we're going to be a weak bond. But then there are also just other physical properties of the bond itself that can determine it, which I guess I'll talk about now. I thought I was going to do that on the next slide. All right. Uh, it has to do with the orbital overlap of the two atoms. Okay, that's what the covalent bond is, right? Orbitals overlap. They share the electrons in those orbitals, and then they count for both, so they get the octet or the duet. All right. So <laughs> let's think about what electrons are being shared. All right. So hydrogen has one electron. We decided what orbital is that one electron in? S, what energy level? One, one S, right? It's just a one S electron. So one S one would be uh, its uh, electron. All right, so one S one. So hydrogen is one S one. All right, and uh, so how do I, how do I do this? All right, I'll just do it. So here's a hydrogen atom. Okay, there's its nucleus, there's its 1s orbital, and then it's got an electron. I'll draw a spin up. Okay, that's there. All right, so that's the electron on this. Fluorine's electron configuration, all right, it might have been a little while, so it might be a little rusty. So we go 1s2 for hydrogen and helium, then 2s2, then 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And so what? Orbital is empty. It's a 2p, right? Okay, so 2p, one of the 2p orbitals is what's going to overlap with hydrogen. Okay, and so hydrogen fluorine's orbitals look something like this the, the p orbitals. Remember the p orbitals? All right, and let's say that's been down. Okay, so that's the bond between HF. Overlapping of the 1s orbital and the 2p orbital for fluorine. Okay. Now let's draw HCl. Hydrogen's still going to be the same, 1s. So no difference there, except for I want to re redraw it. Nucleus, 1s orbital, electron in it. What orbital is going to overlap with a hydrogen for an HCl bond? 3p. So it'd be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, all filled up. 3s2, 3p5. So it's the 3p that needs an extra electron. So it's 3p. Who remembers? This is reaching back. Okay. What would be the difference between a 2p orbital and a 3p orbital? So the number of electrons, okay, they get up to the distance it is from the nucleus. Which one's bigger, 3p or 2p? 3p. 3p is going to be a bigger orbital. Those electrons are further away. That's why they're in higher energy level. So the turns out that the 2p and the 1s orbital are very close in size. Okay, so that's why I draw them very close in size. The 3p is much bigger, so it's like, more oh, goes off the screen. And that's this way. And then here's this other. So the 3p 1s orbital overlap is not very good. Okay? The 1s 2p orbital is like, let's fits like a glove. Okay, very close in size, so they overlap very well. And so, what do you think that does to its bond strength? It makes it a stronger bond. So, 1s2p happens to be just a really good, strong bond because it's very good orbital overlap. The 1s and the 3p, a lot poorer overlap, so a weaker bond. Okay, and so even though fluorine is the most electronegative atom in the universe, including Pluto, can kick Pluto out of the universe. Okay, it's a stronger bond and making it a weak acid. Okay, because of that good overlap. Okay.
Okay. The rest of the halogens, it's starting with HCl, the rest of them are going to be strong acids, really weak bond, because even past the chlorine, it gets worse and worse. Bromine, even bigger, 4P. Iodine, 5P, even bigger orbitals, so less overlap. And so that um, weakens that bond. It, well, that's, that's the crux of it. So the stronger the bond, the weaker the acid. The weaker the bond, the stronger the acid. And we'll write that down. Okay, so good overlap creates strong bond. So poor overlap. equals weaker bond and a terrible doubling.